what's up guys in this tutorial I'm just going to quickly show you some of the most basic things to do in Affinity Designer so I've never really used the program until today and I've picked it up super quick because of maybe experience in Illustrator and Photoshop and all these other programs down the line but I just wanted to quickly touch on how unbelievably cheap Affinity Designer is so if you head on over to uh, I'll leave the link in the description so it's made by a company called Serif Affinity is their range of software but you can actually download a free trial see it's just a little link that's hidden at the bottom in blue. If you hit that, you'll get like a month's free trial. So it's definitely worth checking out before you buy it to see if you like it. Um, there's an amazing iPad edition as well for £20, which is a, it's such good value. I mean, for a full-fledged piece of software like this, it's well worth checking out. But I'm just going to head on over to Affinity Designer. I know a lot of other videos show you some of the most basic things you can do, but I'm going to show you as a newbie and <laughs> trying to figure it out. So, in any in any software, the first thing you want to do is find the pen tool. So let's just get a new a new artboard. So file new, set it up for print. That's fine. So here's our tools on the left hand side. One of the most basic features about Affinity Designer is you can actually switch between vector and the pixel in this top top left, which is a which is very cool. So with pixels, there are different things you can do, like brushes, whereas vector is more of a pen tool. Um, they're just different ways design software works. Pic ve ve uh, vectors look great no matter how far you zoom in, whereas pixels, uh, sh uh, it has little squares and it, it doesn't scale very well, but you can do more things in it. So the first thing you want to do is find the pen tool on the left. So if I just click anywhere, and then I'll click and drag to find the corners, and then I'll do it again and then what you normally do is with the pen tool you go back to the first one you then make a shape I can then click on this and I'll give my shape a little fill so we've got this cool color wheel <coughs> the color wheel I actually found that was invented by Isaac Newton so it's well worth checking out the history of a color wheel um, so we've got that let's put that there so your stroke control is here so with the stroke this is the color on the outside. I can actually make it thicker by clicking on this. So let's make it one point. This should make a thicker stroke. Then <coughs> I'll make it a bit bigger. You can see what I'm doing. Let's change the color. There you go. So that's the pen tool. So actually I'm gonna switch into, into pixel zone now and I'm gonna zoom in. And what you'll see is, see the vector, see the way I've zoomed in, and it, uh, the computer's actually redrawn it, and it still looks crisp. If I go to my brush tool, if I start drawing with a brush, you'll see the difference. See the way the vector is still sharp, and I'm still zooming in, whereas the brush is all pixely. That's just the difference between raster and pixel graphics. So you can't use the brush tool in a... Um, in normal mode but say once you'd finish your design and you wanted to add some styling on top it is something that you can definitely do like they've got the brush the eraser tool you can add drop shadows in it they've got like dodge and burn tools which are in um which which see i'm making it a bit darker here there are like fine things which you can paint in that you just can't do on a see the way i'm like burning the canvas here you can actually make your illustration look super sweet so let me just show you something on their website quickly so if I go up to where they've got they're actually telling you about the software let's find this so see this if I click vector only see the way it's all gradients and it looks uh, it looks really computerized whereas with raster so they've added like drop shadows they've burnt it they've just made it look a bit more sophisticated for final output and that's something that you can do in affinity designer so what else you can do you can use your selection tools so it's kind of got like everything built into photoshop uh, you've got your layers on here so normally i'd add a new layer and then and then you can do everything in this new layer so you can do all your controls or you can go back into affinity mode and then you have you have all your things like you've got your gradient tool here so you click on the gradient and you can add see the way I'm shifting the gradient across using this little line that's quite nice so I could put it so I'll put a gradient like that across then I imagine if I click here I can then control what colors I've got on my gradient so let's change this to more of a red and then let's just get this that's quite nice see the way I can move the the gradient right across so let's just move it toward there 
Then I'm going to move this to the bottom and you can see that's at the back. I keep doing this by mistake. You can rotate your artboard by um, on my Wacom. I've actually got one finger on it and I'm moving the other finger up and down. Then, so let's delete all of this rubbish that I've done. Then you've got your shape tools. So you could do your square, it's got a stroke on it. I can uh, I can get rid of the styling. You can add dotted lines to it, which is actually quite fun. I used to use this a lot in magazine design. You can get quite like, if, I, if you don't want them, so this cap end actually makes them rounded. It's kind of like the corners. So you can do it like square. You could make it quite small. Normally, if you do it in black, it looks quite nice. So you got your swatches here. So if you make it black, so you can see how you can actually get quite nice. You know, you can do some nice things with lines. So what else can we do? We can draw triangles, and it keeps the style in from what we've done before. If you want rounded corners, you normally select this tool down here. Then typography. So ah, I've never seen that before. So if you click and drag it actually it actually gives you a live preview of what your type size is going to be like. That's that's quite nice because sometimes you know you you're guessing oh what uh what size is my type going to be and look you can click and drag from the corners and it proportionally keeps it. So that's actually quite a nice feature and look at the way it's like constrained the type to the box. I hate nothing more than design programs where you have a massive type box and a very small space to type. So that's that's well worth it and here's your let's get rid of that box so let's have a look at our type controls up here so we've got our font where we normally select it let's select double gothic then up here we've got our you can you know you can uh, save styles you've got all your typography tools here and then you've got all your alignment tools at the top if you want to left aligner um, normally when you have multiple objects if I just draw these I can select them all and then I'll normally just I'll, um, you have to select everything you want and then you click your align tool here and then you can align them to the left to the center to the right and you could you can do some complicated things I actually don't like the way I have to click into this normally on a lot of design tools it just has them out like it's it's not like there's not enough space there so that's something and then then you've got your more fine tools. So if I move this rectangle on top of this one, what you can do is you can double select both of them and then see here you've got like the you subtract. So I can actually subtract that shape from that shape and make like a more complex shape. And you can uh, you can normally add them together to get shapes of different sizes. So sometimes if you want some of these complex shapes, like I'll just show you how to do this. So let's just get rid of this. Let's get rid of this stroke. So if I draw a circle, then I draw another circle. I'm going to show you if I select both of these circles and then hit subtract. It's how you do a crescent moon shape and a lot of people think that's cool. So that's how you would use something like that. Then again, we've got our eyebrow eyedropper tool where we can select colors and it puts it in our swatches over here. A uh, hand where we can move around and then it's got infinite zoom on it as well. So I can keep zooming in and this will always look good. Uh, to infinity because of the way vectors work and then it's got really good exporting tools as well so it says you can um, you can also work across every device so if you have Windows you have your iPad you use the same document which is amazing it's only been recently that programs have been able to do this so if you like me I work on a laptop during the day I have my Mac um, sometimes in the morning I can work across both files and then you can export it you know for for print it's even got artboard set up. So if I go back into Affinity Designer, you can see this is set up on an artboard. If I select my artboard tool here on the left, I can select different size devices. So if I want an iPhone, all I do is drag um, into artboard, and there you go, it's actually put it on an iPhone for me, and I can design to that size and then export it. And then maybe if I wanted to like showcase it on a device, I could put it put it in there that's just a quick overview of Affinity Designer I hope you like it I'm definitely gonna definitely check out the free trial which again if you go to buy now you can download it here all you do is need to put your email address in but for the price it's it's well worth it and for me as a learner sharing my illustration process it's um I've actually got up and running a little bit quicker than I did in Illustrator so yeah definitely check it out